The embroidery plugin for Corel is a plugin which would allow a Corel user to convert his graphic design and vector files to embroidery file using the plugin itself. Let's have a look and let's see what the plugin is. First of all, let me select an object and you will see something which you are not used to see on Corel. First of all, the stitch types, which are part of the plugin. So you can convert an object to a run, to a steel segment, to a complex fill segment, to a satin path segment, to a cross stitch fill segment. You can even use the embroidery fonts digitized by Pulse. You can also apply three letter monogram. And of course, what you will also see in part of tools, you will see the bit edit tool, which will allow you to edit start and end point on your segments, your angle line tool, your slice line tool. So let's have a look. Let me take the segment which is selected. I just click and it's converted to a run. I click again and it is a complex field. I need to edit the inclination, so I click on the angle line tool as I have done, as you have seen. Here are my inclinations. I click and drag and I change the inclination of my complex field. If I want to apply and convert this object to a satin path, I select it. I select the satin path tool, angle line tools, and I start adding my angle lines. As you can see, as soon as I'm closing the outline, I see the plus sign, which is indicating that I can add angle lines. As soon as it is there, I click, I drag, I apply my inclinations. I can always come back and edit, make the changes I want. So let me add one more inclination here. And the slice line tools to add one slice line here, another virtual slice line here. My satin path segment is ready. If I want to go faster, I can always use the automation tools which are included in the plugin. So I can select all those segments, use auto satin path. And basically, the embroidery plugin will apply inclination lines and virtual slice lines to the segments, converting them to satin path segments automatically. So now, what do I need to do? I need to apply the settings I need for high quality embroidery. So using my embroidery object properties window, I can go and I can change my underlay. So you can add a contour underlay, a zigzag, a full lattice. I'm not happy with the distance of the underlay. So I need to change the distance to 0.3 millimeters. That can easily be done. I would definitely need some pull compensation here. So let me click. Pull compensation. Let's add an absolute one. 0.3 millimeters. So I have also my pull compensation. If we notice the connection of the embroidery segments, you will see that the connection is not the closest one. Why? Look at the U. Here I have my start and the connection is too far away. So I need to come to the closest point connection. Again, I will use my automation tools in the plugin. Embroidery object, auto start stop. I have my closest point connection. I've forgotten to add trims. So commands and commands, I can add trims. As you can see, trims have been applied to the small scissors here. And around the trim, you always need a lock stitch and let's say a lock stitch always the end type line one lock stitches are set 
if I want to see how my embroidery file would look, I can always click on the 3D window, show 3D, which is part of the plugin. You can see here, that shows me my stitches. And now I'm done. I want to save embroidery I square file, export, and I always have the option to export the design I have created either as a pulse embroidery file, which is PXF files, which include the outline information, or to the known machine formats like Tajima TBF, for example, and the most known machines. Let me save it as a PXF file so I can use that later. Save. With those easy steps using embroidery I square and without the need to leave Corel, I've converted a vector file into high quality embroidery.